Midas NFX Simulation Lecture 1 The Structure of CA Analysis First of all, we open a new file and give it a name. And the structure is the sixfold structure. First of all, we construct a 3D model, the geometry, or we import the geometry from a CAD system. And the second step is to define material properties and meshing. So this is the second step and third step. Step four will be constraints or boundary conditions and loading. This is step four for statics analysis. And for heat analysis or for dynamics uh, mechanism and transient thermal analysis. This is also the step four. And this is the step four for uh, computational fluid dynamics. So for now, we'll be using aesthetics. The aesthetics step four will be constraints here, or boundary conditions and loading force. This is the concentrated force. This is the distributed force, the pressure. Step five will be performing or running the analysis, running the procedure. Step six will be the result. And there are three steps here. The first step will be the geometry, the material, and the mesh. The second step will be the boundary conditions and loading. And this will be step five, analysis and result, step six. So this is one, two, three, four, five, and six. So now let's start the process by importing a parasolid geometry from SOLIDWORKS. And Midas can take SOLIDWORKS version 2010 or before. But for later versions, we need to transfer to parasolid. And we can hide the grid here. These are all visuals. We can hide or show all the elements or the coordinate system or the grids or all the surfaces or expanding, zooming or rotating the geometry. So for now, we have opened a case and import the geometry. So we have finished with the first step. So I'll save the file on desktop. The second step will be material. First of all, we will load a material, isotropic material, 1020 mile steel. First of all, I'll change the Young's modulus to be 3 times 10 to the 11, and Young's modulus of 0.3. So this will make easier my calculations. And the result will be 0.213 millimeters of deflection. So for now, I have uh, loaded a mild steel and this is the default alloy steel material and this is loading of material and next step will be connecting the geometry with the material so we will define a material of mild steel 1020 for this 3d geometry so this step property step will be connecting material with the geometry. So this will be the step two. Step one will be geometry, right? We have imported the geometry. Step two will be the uh, material property. We load the material and then connecting the material with the geometry. The third step will be the mesh, 3D mesh. And we can select an object and let it implement mesh. Or we can change the size of the mesh and implement the mesh. And it is finished. So we can show or hide meshes. Or hide the mesh for now. And we have finished with the third step, which is meshing. So for step four, we have boundary conditions, constraints. I will click on the center mouse button and rotate the geometry and choose the entity of phases 
and I choose this surface for constraint. This is the fixed and boundary conditions to be totally fixed. This is the first part of step four. The second part of step four is loading. I'll choose type of load to be concentrated force instead of distributed load. So this is the type of load. And the surface of the load to be this surface, the end surface. The direction of the load by indicated by this edge. And x-axis is upward, so I'll give it a negative direction of 100 Newton. So beware that for the loading, we have to choose the type of the load, the surface of the load, the direction of the load, and also the magnitude of the load. So up to now, we have finished with the step one through step four, and we have totally defined the problem. So these are called preprocessors. So therefore, now we can I implement the solution phase. First of all, we'll give it a name and perform running the procedure. And this is the step five, implementation or running the solution. And finally, the result. And we have results of displacement, volumes, stress, and strain as the default output of the result. And because I have hidden the meshes, the visuals does not show. So I have to show all meshes and then show the contour plot. And we can show animations. And we also can probe the numerical values of the displacement or the volume stress. As I said that the displacement will be 0.213. So the answer is correct. And also we can perform a on-curve numerical value. For example, for an edge such as this, this edge, we can perform a 20 point evaluation of the result. And this is the result. We can show the table, and the table is here. We can go back to the graphics plot. And these are the general procedures for six step for the CA analysis in Midas NFX. So again, let me review this six step CA analysis. The first step will be the geometry. We import a parasolic file from SOLIDWORKS. The second will be the material. And we load the material and connect the material with the geometry. And then the third step will be uh, constructing or generate the meshes. Step four will be the boundary conditions or constraints and loading. And for the loading, we need to define the type of the load, surface of the load, direction of the load, and magnitude of the load. And up to now, the four steps are called preprocessors. And after we completed preprocessors, we completely define the problem. And next will be the step five, implementation of the solution phase, and then the result. This is lecture one, CA analysis, the six step structure.